later on with Serera, came through that route. And you do have a direct sort of genealogy from the crystal split all the way through to the, to the late, the mid to late 60s and indeed through the early 70s with the people who were dynamic, including, can I say this out loud, in, in this very village where the bank was robbed in June 1968. The, the month I was born, right? And that they were people who had uh, associations with this tendency. I'll finish off by saying that those who didn't feel comfortable going back into the British structures, or would not have been let, and that included people like Jerry Lawless, who was, who was a, had an interesting side career as a, as a Trotsky, Trotskyist agitator in London, and a civil rights uh, participator uh, of, of some degree, at the Bert Mart, for instance. Uh, people like Lee Walsh, and others, who uh, I won't name them all, obviously. Uh, not so much Crystal, but people around Crystal, he was in the background, certainly. The, uh, Liam Sutcliffe, of course, um, very interesting character. The same type of people who blew up the memorials, we'll say, in the 1950s, were the same ones who did it in the 60s. And um, I've had some interesting news about one that has not attributed to them, but probably was. The most famous one, of course, is Nelson being uh, taken off his perch in, in March 66. And that was definitely um, um, John Liam Sutcliffe in, in operation with members of the Crystal Circuit for reasons that are even more complicated than he explained on radio. Mm -hmm. question, but it, it's moving on yeah, a, a, a little. Um, so the, the Sarah name survives on into the, the late 70s and early 80s. Yes. Uh, he, he, he was being used in Fort Leash as yeah. an identity in, in, through the 80s. It was. Um, can you just talk a little bit to, to, to that kind of lineage there? Yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a difficult question to be honest with you because there's so many different personalities and collectively they, I don't think they were all ever on the same page. You'd have the slightly older volunteers who, and I say older, there'd be men in their 30s and early 40s who come through the Phoebus campaign. You have people uh, who joined the IRA in the latter stages or indeed were allowed to join it in the rebuilding phase after 62, which is quite hard to do by the way because the IRA itself has been you know, reduced steadily by Carl Gooding and Thomas McGillet. But some of those who do who feature from, we'll say, 66, 67, 68, well, starting from 68 onwards, you can see they're gearing towards something. Now, I, I, I don't like putting labels on groups that are a little bit uh, diffuse, and they were diffuse. That was one of their strengths, is they were hard to sort of identify and grasp at one time. But there was definitely, if I could put it this way, a subversive intent. There was no respect for authority, there was no belief in the 26th County establishment. The belief that they tended to be uh, on the far left side of the broad Republican family. And they were not going to recognize the very communist the free state because it wasn't the proper country. And the manner in which the uh, budgets were being deployed were not addressing things like um, housing action and mass emigration, lack of industrialization, underdevelopment in general. So some of them would have felt very strongly about that. And to carry out their sort of propaganda of the deed and to destabilize the state, which made them quite dangerous people in terms of the eyes of the conservative establishment, they, um, they were very innovative in terms of how they went about robbing banks. I mean, in, in, on occasions, robbing more than one or two in a, in a given sector, um, robbing very large payrolls, which they must have known through inside information or other forms of intelligence that they were going to be particularly large that day. Um, they, and they, they were very successful at it. Um, very, they were, the, the, the authorities realised that they weren't dealing with criminals here. You're dealing with politically motivated people using illegal methodologies very efficiently because they all had some form of paramilitary inculcation and training and know-how. Um, there are some very famous personalities. Liam Walsh was one. Liam Walsh met his end prematurely when he was bombing uh, the embankment at McKee, the rear of McKee Barracks. Then disused, then the disused rail line. A man with him was badly injured and another person was uninjured. Um, their names are known, but I'm not, I'm not going to get it right now. Uh, he, he was, this, this is because it's basically speak a free state military target. Now, they weren't going to attack soldiers and anything mean, crazy like that, but they would be prepared to poke the bear and to embarrass the authorities and to do things like that. I mean, taking down Nelson was, was quite an affront to, like, you know, the, the middle classes of Dublin City who were quite happy with their wonderful statue of this heroic gentleman, you know what I mean? Uh, the main force IRA, of course, had failed to act. Their plan then. Barrack, barrack attack uh, north of the border had been betrayed probably by George Points, we'll never know for sure, and had to be called off, and sensibly was called off by good reconnaissance. So the activities of the IRA stand out in stark relief to the inactivity of the IRA, and the belief that the IRA, the general public were thought that the IRA, what are they doing? Are, are, are they really gone? Is, is, is it entirely now about um, Sinn Féin um, contesting council seats here and there? 
because that's what it looked like. They, were, they became very anonymous other than Bonus Town and, and, and Easter Sundays and, and the commemorations. But meanwhile, in Sarah area, we're, we're doing and claiming and issuing um, a manifesto, issuing statements that were very, very far left in, in content. I mean, one of the famous activists was Sean Doyle, a.k.a. Russian Doyle. And even the IRA, you don't get a name like Russians for no reason, you know. And if half of what I've heard about him is true, he was quite extraordinary. I could mention, because he wouldn't mind me mentioning, Simon O'Donnell, who's a highly intelligent, um, far left Republican. Um, there, there are quite a few who would have fed, fed in advice to the younger generations as things he's up again, particularly after 68, 69, with the brutal response to the advocacy of basic civil rights in the north of our country. Just to point um, Joel Steins that we're talking about, mm -hmm. he was born in Newbridge. Well said. That's and, right. And he was in Dublin Brigade then, and yeah. in the World Independence period. He was at Bloody Sunday. Mm -hmm. He had a pistol with him and dropped it. He was a picket. He actually dumped his pistol before the Black and Tans and that came in uh, on the way in, and he eventually goes off to America anyway, where he, mm -hmm. he's heavily involved in Clan and Yes. That's a great story. I, 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 I've forgotten that actually. I've been to his grave. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fine, and the grave's been restored relatively recently, so it's, it's, it's a fine And he yeah. split again with, in the 80s, didn't he? Yes, well, that's, that's the, the American side of it is quite phenomenal because they split and recall S, and then they split and yeah. they recall S. But they all started off with Clandy Gale, although Clandy Gale would deny it. And post 86 was something by Flannery that were involved in coming to Sirtia. Yes. So I actually I spoke as Craig as well a few years ago, I was over here, about 11 years ago, I was in New York. But he's actually a tie connection as well, um, in oh. just times, yeah. Uh, I remember members of his family actually when I was over there. Mm. Um, they, were, they were actually at the ceremony there. But um, like that, yeah, when, when the split in 86 came, he would have supported my family, people like that, and supported Rory O'Brien, yes. Donald, Bjorn Ireland, yeah. That, well, that, that's how, that's how yeah. he's regarded as sort of his, his last major political mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing guy. I, I understand he played for Dublin and Mead, which is quite something at one point. And he played for soccer mm -hmm. as well. He would not learn with Dublin, I think, in 23, yeah. I think. Yeah. Of course, the, the Steins dynasty in, in GAA and Australia rules football is, is quite notable too. Mm -hmm. Are you happy, mate? That's it. I think uh, Sean Roxon's Doyle came from Noon in County Kildare. I think you're right. And he also was one of the people who robbed the bank in Newbridge. Anyway, thanks very much. Thank